And the lucky thing about being in the entertainment business is like, we're literally fusing like business with pleasure, right? You, for example, going out for drinks with a club owner because you just kind of want to network and keep a relationship going, like that bill is a write-off because you talk business. Yeah, I and I even used to be able to write off like buying bottles at the club to say that I was in there showing love and trying to you know yeah. network my way into playing at that club and shit like that. But they recently changed something where like the entertainment portion of your write-offs is I can no longer do that. I don't know. My accountant told That's, me. That's yeah. You have always had to talk to your, <laughs> always talk to your cat. Like They're I never want to be. The yeah. Rules. They are. All right. How right? Battle raps because I've shaken grown men to the point that they can't even face their own friends. Uh, that's why they rhyme about jewels, not life, because the ice on which they skate in is so thin. Welcome back to the Party with Strategy podcast. Thank you guys for joining us. Today we have a very special guest. Thank you for coming out. The queen of the uh, DJ scene, who I don't even really know because we're in kind of two different DJ scenes. I'm like nightclub world. You're definitely more festival, like performance producer dj kind of world and i'm excited to get some information we got olivia mancuso on the couch here how you doing i'm doing pretty well it's funny when you fall or one of us followed the other and i'm like how do we have like 700 mutual friends but we've never run into each other before but i feel like that happens a lot in chicago yeah it does yeah it does because the scene is really small and i feel like we all orbit the same places especially because there's not that many house music venues in Chicago in general, so you're bound to run into someone at some point. Yeah, and um, you know, we we ran into each other in the in the stew here, and we're gonna make it happen. We're gonna make a little magic. I didn't want to do too much research because I like to kind of get an explanation from people of what they do more so than like trying to do an interview style kind of thing where I'm like asking questions. You know what I mean? Yeah. So how did you kind of get into this whole world and and what is it like what would be your title be really even you know All right. so it started when i was 18 going to spy bar underage okay <laughs> just kidding but no it actually started before then in high school i heard my first ever house music track i want your soul by Armin, armand van helden and i was like hooked on this music <laughs> hooked and my brother's a producer and he started messing around making music and we come from a musical family. And so that's how I got into the house music scene. How I started working in the scene was I used to be a TV news reporter covering crime, politics, like interviewed every president elect that you know from the past 10 years. It was a crazy, crazy lifestyle. I hated it. You did that in Chicago? No, I did that in Iowa and Florida. Oh, dang. Which were two, they're not my favorite places. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not at all. But so I did that. I got out of the business and I got into marketing and I was like, wow, this sucks too. Like I'm bored. And so I decided to try to be my own boss, like start freelancing, working for different clients in, you know, the entertainment world and like just wherever I could. And that's kind of how I ended up blending the two. And I started my podcast, Elevated Frequencies, interviewing the DJs that I had met, you know, just from, again, like being in the scene and being able to see the scene. It's, it's very easy to like connect with artists, like in this genre of music compared to pop, country, whatever else people listen to. Why, why is that? It's like more, everyone has a little bit more love for each other, you think? Or what is that? I think it's just, it's a more communal type of music in general. I mean, you're all out like till three, four, five in the morning. The DJ booth is on the dance floor, like not very, I mean, festivals are different, but like, it's just a more communal experience. And I've been fortunate. I think Chicago has a lot of great talent and everyone's always been willing to help each other out. Now I say that from where I'm sitting, I know being a producer or being a DJ in this city is, is difficult. And that's why I started my podcast because I want to provide that outsider perspective with some resources and knowledge for people to take and maybe it's stuff they haven't heard before. And you have a Patreon, right? Is I do. that is that yeah. your most main source of income? No. So my my main source of income is doing brand strategy for DJs, brands in the in the entertainment world, brands in the financial world, but I don't advertise that as much. 
My Patreon, though, is an extension of my podcast, and that is where I help DJs one-on-one with, like, any sort of business questions they have, you know, branding questions they have. My thing is that I went to journalism school, which is the dumbest degree you could ever get. Like, it taught me nothing about life. It taught me nothing about having a job. And if I could start a business, a very successful business at that, with no proper business training, I feel like it's my responsibility to share that knowledge with producers who are all in on their music, but they don't understand how to make a brand. They don't understand what to write off. Like, they'll tell me things and I'll be like, you could have fucking wrote off $3,000 of this, you know, gig or whatever. Like, you're already in the red because you had to buy your own flights and you had to do X, Y, and Z. You need to be taking control of the business side of DJing, you know? And so, and so that's what I'm trying to do. So if you didn't go to school for business, how what you just dove into doing your own business and then found all these things out along the way? Yeah, it was like it took hitting rock bottom for me. I was making no money and I felt like I was actually losing money by going to this marketing job that I hated because it was zapping all my energy when I got home and I didn't have time to like figure out what I really wanted to do. And so the first book I read was Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which I recommend to everybody. And another book I read was called Smart Cuts. And it's all about taking your experience in one area of life and applying it to a completely different one to like make a smart jump rather than like climbing that traditional ladder. And so I read those books and I just started doing hella research. I found like good trusted advisors and you know, the first couple months, like when I quit my job and decided to start building up my own clientele, doing branding and and marketing for them, like it was scary because I didn't know where my money was going to come from, but it paid off so fast because I was able to give 100% of my attention to it rather than trying to do it on the side when I got home from the job I hated. Yeah. What was like the first, I don't want to say success you had, but like the first, you know, headway that you made in your starting your new business, you're working with a client and you really realize like, oh shit, I'm, I'm like making moves here. I'm, I'm helping this person out. What I have to offer is really paying off for them. Yeah. So I would say I, cause I want to talk about DJs because me working with like, you know, financial brands, sure. It brings in good money, but it's not it's not that interesting, you know? Everybody needs branding and marketing help. With artists, what I love to see happen is when I'm working through them with their brand and like seeing stuff click. So like I have this one Patreon student who is so big into action sports. Like he surfs, he has a motorcycle, he does jujitsu, like he does all these things. And none of that was coming through on his page. And he's been released on some amazing labels. Like his producer chops are insane. And he was just using like the very generic method of releasing like or updating people about what he's doing with his music. And I'm like, dude, like you already do all these things. Let's integrate that into your brand. So you're not like, you're not forcing yourself to find a new way to make content because that's just so stressful. So like the biggest thing for me when I help people, it's like, what are you already doing in your life and how can we use that to further your music? And when I see that click, it's like they're excited to make content now. They're excited to do these things, these things that used to bring them so much dread. And so I love seeing that happen. Yeah. So he was like, he does all this cool stuff, action sports, surfing, all that, whatever. But he also produces, he makes yeah. music. And then he would like release a track with some sort of motion graphic or something. Like like, like him mm. surfing. Yeah, like he would use videos of him surfing. And these were all just hobbies for him. You know, so it was just like stuff he was doing on the side. And yeah, he would use those videos. And he still is. We're still working on building out, you know, his strategy. Like he's using like, well, I'm going to the skate park with all my friends. Like I'm just going to use this cool shot of me doing a trick you know, as a real, like, and maybe, you know, maybe use a trending audio or maybe use his own track. We we work it out together, but like, it's just so easy because I think that's the biggest struggle DJs face right now is they're like, how am I supposed to be this marketing machine and continuously promote myself and fight the algorithms and blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't have time for that. I just want to do my artistry. And to that, I say, that's fucking bullshit because you've had to promote yourself since the beginning of time. Like we just now have different avenues to do it. And so how do we make it the least, you know, the path of least resistance? Yeah, it is. That does become constantly the most stressful thing is like 
getting out of the creative space of creating what you love to create, which is music for these mm -hmm. people, and then having to apply your creative brain to the business side of like, how do I make this real go viral? How do I get right. this to happen? How do I do this? And then you lose love for your original creation mm -hmm of you know that right. that thing that you enjoy doing so much has just become this burden of like how do i get it to people now and it's just like yeah and 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 the thing is is i understand why it it's like something people want to avoid but what i always say is if you can take control of it and and figure it out and demystify it like it will give you more time and freedom to work on your craft like i was so bad at math like i literally remedial math in high school went to tutoring had to be there at 7 a.m every morning before school started and i now know tax strategy like the back of my hand and it was because i read the books i did the work used chat gbt to help figure out like what certain things meant and it's exciting to me it's like this thing that used to bring me so much fear and anxiety i'm now like the master of so without giving out too much free info here, because obviously you want people to sign up for your Patreon to get the real gold here, but what like what are some some basic tax strategies? Yeah, I'm all about free info, by the way. Like I'll give it all away for free because right. at the end I'm of the day, I'm not gonna stop you. At the end of the day, the difference between doing something yourself versus having an expert, like everyone gets to the point where they're going to need some help. Because I, I mean, obviously, I had to hire a really good CPA to help. You know, I have an S Corp now. Uh, my husband has an LLC. There's all these different things. So knowing what you can expense is huge. Um, and I do have like a whole and remember, I'm not I'm not a tax professional. I'm just, you know, your friendly DJ advice. I don't know, whatever you want to call me. But I have a whole PDF in there of all the things you can expense, like if you hire a photographer, videographer, your meals on, like when you're going to a gig, uh, and especially if it's out of state, your meals, your lodging, um, any sort of travel expenses like your Ubers. Uh, you know, do you have to buy a specific outfit for a, you know, press shot because that's what the brand wants if you're working with the brand? Really, like, the options are endless, but you have to have a good use case for it. And the lucky thing about being in the entertainment business is like, we're literally fusing like business with pleasure, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can consider you, for example, going out for drinks with a club owner because you just kind of want to network and keep a relationship going. Like that bill is a write-off because you talk business. So yeah, I and I even used to be able to write off like buying bottles at the club to say that I was in there showing love and trying to, you know, yeah. network my way into playing at that club and shit like that. But they recently changed something where like the entertainment portion of your write-offs is I can no longer do that. I don't know. My accountant told That's, me it's... yeah. You have always had to talk to your <laughs> always talk to your cat. Like They're I always never want to be the yeah. rules. They are. They are. But like that's why having that baseline knowledge is so important so you feel like you can stay on top of those things like i recently used uh the augusta rule if you have you ever heard of that the augusta rule comes from uh the masters tournament and it essentially was created because so many people were i guess renting out their homes during the masters uh to people who wanted to come and and watch the tournament and so what the Augusta rule lets you do is rent out your home to your business for up to 14 calendar days a year. And it's essentially like a, a dollar per dollar reduction mm -hmm. like on your personal income taxes. And so when I worked ARC Music Festival, my I was doing interviews there uh, for ARC and my home was media headquarters. And so the Augusta rule applied because there was all this prep going on. You know, we had makeup artists. I'm like getting all this stuff ready. And so for those three days, I was able to use that rule. Um, but there's things you have to document it. You have to like literally write a lease agreement. Um, you have to get invoices from all the people that were there or, you know, 1099s. And so, yes, it's a process. But like if you want to maximize your income, the number one thing you should be doing is reducing your tax liability. Yeah, that's pretty tight. I um, I should probably be writing off more of this studio right I'm here. I'm like seeing 500 <laughs> things in here. Every piece of artwork, like, come on. Yeah, it's fucked up. That one's priceless from the No Good Boys. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, you can you can write that off. 
or you can you can get it appraised. And that's like, like some rich people shit. That's is. when you start getting into the real game of yeah. playing with money. When you're when you're yes. creating your own value for the art that you got. Mm -hmm. I could say that thing's worth five million dollars. I you mean, could. who's to tell me it's not? You just got to get it appraised <laughs> at five million. So you got to find like you know an appraiser that you can give a hundred dollar handshake to and exactly. be like, just add a zero to this. Some real Chicago shit. Yeah, exactly. Where are you originally from? The suburbs, like everybody else. Which one? Hawthorne Woods, have you okay. heard of it? By Mundelein, in Lake Zurich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's out there. When did you yeah. move to the city? When you were 18, going to Spy Bar underage? No, my dad used to have an office above Spy Bar. And so oh, I really? kind of used that. I was interning at Kiss FM, and I would go to his office after to, like, change and then go down to Spy Bar. Uh, but I was, like, that was when I was, like, 20. I think 20, 21. And who was, like... Who was huge at the time in terms of local Chicago? Like, was Infinity running it? Who of was like, who yeah, was? Yeah, of course. I love Infinity. Yeah. Still do. I can't believe how long he's been making music. I, know, um, I mean, a... that's when Promo 7 was running. Okay. Spy Bar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're talking Riz. Yes. Yes. Nice. That crew. Um, and I'm sure they're still doing stuff. Not at Spy, but. I know that they have my favorite Thursday party right now at Cashmere. At Cashmere. Cashmere's yeah. cool. They have great drinks. Which is nice. Like I've always advocated for clubs to have real cocktails. Yeah. Because like I'm not, I'm at the stage in life where I'm not going to just go drink a White Claw. I'm not going to drink, you know, a vodka Red Bull. Like if I'm going to drink, I want it to be worth it. So yeah. I like cashmere for that. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. What's uh, what makes a drink worth it to you? Like some some real flavor, some yeah, thought like put if into it, it. Exactly. Like, and it doesn't have to be overcomplicated, but just something a little elevated. You know, you gotta have a garnish on there. Depends. Depends no. on the bar. <laughs> Some bars you don't want the garnish. You're like, how long has that garnish been there? <laughs> so it just depends. That's true. What um What are some of your favorite spots right now in the city for house music? So Spy Bar always. Yeah. Um, Classic. I I love Radius, even though that's a venue. I guess more more so. Um, God, where have we been? I love Concord Forever. That's also a venue. I really have not been on the club tip for a little bit because I've struggled to stay awake lately for headliners. It's yeah. so bad. You're it's, getting old, falling asleep early? Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard when you think about the fact that headliners, like, because Prism has had so many good bookings this year. Like, it's insane. And, like, we're de I'm definitely going to be going to ABO in November because my that's far out, but, like, my friend hit me up i'm like all right we got to get a table because i need like not even for the bottles just to sit he's like so man, i can yeah. have because he's gonna go on probably 2 two thirty. i'm like i need to be able to sit so i can just like yeah my old ass you need that real estate i mean yeah. that's what a table is like it's, it is. you're paying for the real estate 100 percent. and i always say like i wish that clubs would and i know there's not enough space for this everywhere but if you could like have a mid-level section where you don't have to buy a bottle, but it still costs something. It's like 200 bucks and you can all stand in this area that has a couple couches. I would do that. Like I would pay that all day. Yeah, and then they could send a server over to you and right. you could buy more drinks from yeah. there. That would be smart. I would, I literally would love that. That's like a nice elevated way of, of implementing some sort of bottle. Because bottles is not really a thing anymore. Like they hit their peak. People aren't going out spending ten twenty thousand dollars on bottles like they were mm -mm. they need to kind of turn it into that i think yeah it's just something more creative it like doesn't have to be black and white you know mm -hmm. if you can find a middle and i guarantee you like people because i'm 32 i always literally i forget i was born in 92 yeah i'm 32 so i feel like people my age who are still going out listening to this music would happily take that middle ground yeah for sure who's yeah. gonna be the first to do it um we'll see we'll see whoever listens to this pod that's yeah. why i like to drop little things you know i'll talk some shit about someone on a pod or something and just see if it get back gets back to them I've you know noticed. so i'm like all right you're at least listening you know what i'm yeah. saying yeah no i've definitely <laughs> since since i've become aware of you i have watched your content uh because i wanted i love to see how other people do things you know sherm is my business partner in the, in this event that we're doing together that i'd love to talk about but you know, I watched his podcast for a long time before I started mine. And I mean, you really know how to get people riled up. You do. <laughs> you do a great job at it. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. 
Yeah, tell me, uh, tell me about the event with Sherm. That's my guy. I yeah. need to hang out with him. I want to go get drunk with Sherm. He's, I mean, he's just like drunk on life. Yeah. So he's he's the best. Uh, yeah. So I was on his podcast back in like November, December last year, and we were talking about the fact that he had moderated a panel at Amsterdam Dance Event, which is like a networking event for house music producers, DJs, and just industry people all over the world. And where was that at? In Amsterdam? In Amsterdam, he was there? yeah. Yeah, Dope. he moderated a panel with Hood Politics, um, who he does A&R for. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about what a great experience it was. And like, we were just both kind of saying, like this was unfolding as we were having our conversation on, on his pod. Like, why don't we have anything like this here? Because it is so annoying when you're trying to dance, just trying to have a good time, and someone comes up to you, tries to talk business. I don't get this part because, like, I'm not a producer, but, you know, so many artists complain about, like, DJs coming up and trying to, other people trying to hand them your USB or, like, whatever it is. It's, like, awkward. It's not the right time or place. And then if you are connected, if you do have that agency to, like, network a little bit, it's usually because you've already achieved some status to where it's acceptable. So, like, where does that leave all the people who are trying to break into the scene? Where do they go? Because you always have, like, I've been to, for other facets of the entertainment world, like, industry events where, like, the whole point is to network. And there's just nothing like that for house music. Like, I know, you know, um, Miami Music Week, uh, what is it called? What they Winter Music Conference. They had it, but that stopped after covid and hasn't been brought back so we're like why don't we just fucking do it like we have the ability to make the investment in a space and we can put our heads together and so it's called chicago music nexus it's happening on november 23rd it's an eight hour day but it's like a fun day two panels one about building out your dream team with like pr um you know lawyers agents managers like whatever you think you need the second one is all about monetizing your brand so what are other avenues that you can make money from your music, like sync licensing, brand deals, that that sort of thing. Um, and then it's like a little networking session with food, light bites, open bar, two more panels on how to adapt in the industry. We've got great people. We've got DJ Lady D, Terry Hunter. We've got um, uh, Hot Pretty, Abigail and Seamus. We've got Abby from House Calls. Uh, so those panels are all about like innovating your brand and staying relevant. And then like touching on some mental health. And then it ends with two hours of networking, more food, like we're getting it catered from some awesome places. We've got all the booze your heart desires. Need and it that. ends at nine. What is what? You need that. You do. You do. And I'm like, I'm trying to tell people like, you're going to spend, the ticket's $150, but we're running a $30 off little promo podcast is the promo code if anyone wants to use it. And so where, where would they use it at? ChicagoMusicNexus.com. Okay. So... If you and I have that in my on my Instagram and bio and stuff, $120 gets you open bar and fed, plus all those like knowledge opportunities and networking. Like all the people on the panels are going to be sticking around during the networking hours. We're also inviting other people, like industry folks that we know, and planting them in the networking session. And the whole purpose is to meet people and network. Like you don't have to feel awkward about it. And so you're gonna spend $120 on food and booze on a weekend anyway. You might as well come learn something. You might as well put your USB in someone's hands. Yeah, that's tight. Where is it at? It's at Loft Lucia in the West Loop. So it's like a little venue space. It's really dope. It's like very industrial looking, like exposed brick, high ceilings, and it's two floors. And they also have a, a rooftop that you know November is like half and half with the weather. We're looking good right now. It it's could, it could hot be good. As fuck. I know. And so if we're able to open that, like you also get rooftop vibes and it's right next to Monteverde in the West Loop, if you know where that is. So like, mm -hmm. it's like perfect spot to go out after. What's the, uh, what's the cap? What's the? 150 people. Okay. Yeah. I feel like you guys should be able to hit that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Ticket sales are going good, but you know, I know people are, it's, it's the <clears throat> first year we're doing this and anytime it's like year one of something, people are a little like sus. They're like, mm -hmm. well, what is this? Is it going to be worth it? But if you don't know, I mean, just come for the open bar. Yeah, at the very least. <laughs> at the very least, you get you get all the drinks you want. And I feel like uh, something like that is really cool. I've never been to, I've been to like a networking event for like real estate people with one mm -hmm. of my boys back when I was like 21. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to try and meet some people and, yeah. you know, whatever. We're going to go party after. 
but uh i've never been to like a music industry networking event so that sounds dope it sounds really cool it sounds like it would be helpful and there's going to be some big names and like i've always said anything that i've ever learned any success that i've ever gained in this world has been from advice that i've gotten from somebody who was doing what i wanted to be doing yep like they're there and then they're nice enough to tell you how they got there right all you have to do is follow the steps yep and it doesn't always work out perfectly sometimes maybe you got to implement your own little side step in the process or whatever yeah. and then that's knowledge that you can bestow upon someone like Ex exactly and it's just the accumulation of like multiple perspectives like the more people you can learn from you can take bits and pieces to carve your own path and uh it's just that i think i don't know what it is if it's like a post covid thing but nobody myself included like has time anymore for anything like i feel like everyone's so busy so stressed and so giving like creating an intentional space like where you can do these things like i feel like that's really important because i i am an introvert and like i have a hard time walking up to people and that i don't know or you know whatever and asking them for something and so um I think most like DJs and producers are introverts too. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are. Yeah. I think it'd be sick like if there was a festival happening like the weekend of whatever me. and then you guys had this like right next to it. You had your own space with this. That'd be fucking tight. I, that is future plans. Yeah. That is the goal. Like we, this date that we're doing was the last one available on the calendar for this venue so we just grabbed it but mm -hmm. i would love to have this sync up with some other you know established chicago festivities uh you know i think i think what we have to do is knock it out of the park year one i mean it's a it's a huge risk putting on an event mm -hmm. like sherman and i have invested lots of money and more time than anything but i don't care i mean i want to see if it works like i've always been like when i started my own business before that i was super risk adverse and like i swear to god like i stepped into a portal or something when i turned 30 and i was just like i need to change my life and like i'm just gonna take risks throw shit at the wall see what sticks like if it doesn't work move on to the next thing fast and it's been very gratifying to live that way because you learn like even if something's a failure on paper you learn and mm -hmm. then you apply it to the next thing and you will never get to where like this applies to anything in life whatever you're trying to do you'll never get to the next level unless you try stuff because you you need data you can't just like wait around and hope someone's gonna hire you or hope someone's gonna pick you you have to make shit happen yeah that's a fact very exciting news brand new sponsor for the show shouts to long drink they see the vision if you guys like what's going on here you gotta go buy some long drink thank you for watching we'll be right back check this out all right, party people, you know how it is. Late nights, great music, and that perfect vibe. And what's a better way to elevate the night than with a refreshing drink in your hand? I'm talking about the Finnish long drink. If you haven't heard of it yet, the long drink is not just any drink. It's a legendary Finnish favorite that's been around since the 1952 Summer Games. It's a deliciously refreshing blend of premium liquor, natural grapefruit flavor, and just the right amount of carbonation. It's smooth, crisp, and perfect for any occasion, whether you're chilling with friends, getting the weekend started, or just winding down after a set. And the best part? It's super convenient. No need to be a mixologist, just crack the can, and you've got a perfectly mixed, ready-to-drink cocktail. Whether you're into the classic, zero, or strong, there's a long drink for everyone. So next time you're tuning into the show, or spinning your own beats, Grab a long drink and take your night to the next level because good vibes deserve great drinks. Cheers to the perfect mix, music and long drink. Let's go, champ. Let's get back to the show. Thank you guys for watching. Shouts to long drink. Make sure you go grab one. Peace. Yeah, sorry. I I just can't focus if I have to pee and I, I cannot hold you. my pee in for the life of me. It's so really, how do you DJ it's like an that? Issue. I've peed in water bottles. For real? I've I I I'll throw a track on and just run to the bathroom and pee real quick and run back to the booth. That's so funny. I've been like back in my younger days when I definitely partied a lot harder. Like I'll never forget one of my friends was DJing and uh his name is Eric Johnson and 
at Spy Bar. He was DJing. Is that Tsunami? Tsunami. It's my boy. Yeah, he's great. We were having a good time. Like my husband and I were dancing or whatever. And like I was pretty lit. And then I looked back up on at the booth and I'm like, who, who is this like great value Eric John? Who is that up there? <laughs> and it looked like him, but like not really. And then I found out later it was one of his friends that just like stepped in while he had to pee. Yeah. And I was like, I never thought about that. Like, especially like the guys who go eight hours. Like they like I've seen like Gene Ferris do an eight hour set, like Solomon. It's like, how are you what are you doing? Do I'm you have a sure catheter? They're, like they're peeing in water bottles for yeah. sure, a hundred percent. But like there's people behind them in the booth. Like no, and one, they don't it looks so natural. Yeah. I've definitely been in a club peeing in a water bottle, looking around and not a single person notices. No one next to That's you. Insane. Everyone's in their own you have world. To be, yeah, you have to be like cool about it. Because yeah. if you look like you're doing something sketchy, yeah. then yeah. And honestly, sometimes like it is so much better to have someone mix a track for you if there's another dj near you you're like yo throw this on mix yeah. something for me because if people do look up in the booth and there's nobody in there you lose a little bit of energy Absolutely. i've noticed that because i've ran came back yep. and i'm like they're not i don't have yeah, them as well as i had them because you like it i don't know how to explain it but like you're in like a trance when you're dancing and it kind of like snaps you out of it for a second you're like oh that person's up there is a human and like you know has to pee or whatever yeah so or you're like yeah. there's nobody in the booth like, yeah no one's driving the ship right yeah. now like yeah, where, yeah. what's happening this should be the next like shark tank convention like bathroom in the booth like who can create something a little bit more sophisticated than a water bottle yeah maybe a you know like a bedpan in there we can just pee there, into there you go little urinal All something right, so that's we have got... So we have non-table VIP areas and bathroom booths. This is all stuff for this, old people. Yeah. This is all old people <laughs> club goers stuff. That's my yeah. I'm, I'm very self-serving. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love that you're throwing this event. I love that I'm... It, it at least feels like there's more people doing cool stuff right now. Or maybe that's just like the place that I'm putting myself into and I'm finding these people now. Mm -hmm. But... I just had Kyle from Sunday Morning Club on here mm -hmm. and he's, awesome. you know, just throwing cool events, doing his own thing. And I think that that is the wave so much more than just some venue opening and trying to get people in there to drink alcohol with no real identity or like purpose or yeah. vision or passion. I, I can tell you like, so I had my husband's birthday party on Saturday and we've thrown parties on our roof before. But we did this one's the first time I ever had a theme party. It was Y2K. I bought like a bag of old flip phones from eBay for like 30 bucks. I bought like ring pops and like baby bottle pops, temporary tattoos. Like I spent like, this was all cheap shit. And then I, you know, got a catered and stuff too. And we had like batch drinks, but like the theme made the party 500 times more fun. Mm -hmm. Cause there was like, uh, like little props and like things to do. And it was just, you know, it helped kind of like people, cause we have friends from lots of different friend groups. So it helped people connect and like people left with new connections. So it, like you said, like if there's like a purpose around an event, I mean, for true music lovers, like the music is enough. And I get that, like I'm a music purist. Like I love, like I can go to a show and not be on my phone the entire time for like five hours and just have a great time. But I think the variety helps, especially because there's people who are aging, like it's a young genre. Like it really got, you know, its roots in, in 89, 90. And now you have all these people who are like 30s to 50s still actively in the scene. So can we get some variety? You know, when the days that we don't want to go to a club and just like hang around 20 year olds who God bless them, they just found <laughs> out what house music is. Like, I'm glad, but like we need, we need some, you know, options. Yeah. And there's the 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 passion that like it's kind of what you said about having a drink, right? Like if you're gonna have a drink, you want it to be something that was made with good intention, not just yep. a vodka soda, like something that has personality to it. And yep. when you walk into an event that somebody really put themselves into and thought about and put work into and like created an experience for you, feels so much better than just walking into some new club that just got lights and right and some it feels like a money and, grab you yeah. know like yeah so yeah i i agree i think there's a lot of cool stuff happening in chicago with these pop-up events and you know i'm i'm arc music festival's biggest fan i love that they have niched down so hard to the point where they're bullying people on twitter that like don't agree with them like i think that's funny and i think it's 
keeps only it, it keeps the real ones in and the rest out yeah wait tell me about this twitter beef i don't know about oh, this you don't know about no. like art like they make fun of everybody they make fun of people like rave babies who use pacifiers they make fun of people who god what was the the pacifier thing and then saying house and techno are not edm like don't call them the same thing they are saying that they They're are like saying EDM that. separate from house correct and techno. which okay. i agree and they got green velvet in the conversation and salute and so like they will start beef and i know who runs that account and like it's great because that person is just very chill in real life but like very sassy online and i love that they're saying like yeah if you want to wear a fucking pacifier like this is not the festival for you and i i think i think that we you know yes i said the word community but like we we just need people to be more like it feels like less of a money grab when there is a brand that's saying like here's who we are and we're standing 10 toes down on it take it or leave it yeah it's kind of weird because you're seeing that now after the whole like oh diversity and inclusion and like that whole huge bubble of like accept everybody and all of their flaws and and don't judge anybody like all that and then like yeah it's cool and the 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 umbrella thought of it is beautiful and like you should always be accepting and all that but then when it gets down to the real nitty gritty and you're like trying to create something like a festival where you are putting certain djs and music together where you're trying to build this community or space for a particular thing it feels like all the div the di diversity and inclusion and all that is like it it muddies that water because you're like trying to even though it is a beautiful thing and this great principle to stand on you are like trying to build something that whoever's creating it has this passion for what they want and they don't maybe they don't want bass music or whatever the fuck it is or the rave babies yeah, you're with the allowed pacifiers to have, you're, and i mean you're allowed to have preferences like first of all arc's lineup was incredibly diverse just by nature and like that's something that when sherman and i were putting together our event i'm like that was something that we considered too we have to make sure we have all voices represented on this and it's not necessarily that you have to have conversations about diversity but make sure the voices that you have in those conversations are diverse so that it's just like naturally creating you know different perspectives um but I, like my hot take and i haven't said this anywhere yet and like oh, i feel like people would come for me if i said this on tiktok but here's my here's my opinion is just my opinion especially because I've the difference in the rave scene here versus Europe. Like you don't see these things in Europe. Like you don't see the pacifiers and like the crazy outfits. It's just a little more integrated into like their daily life. I think that there is, and let me, let me say this, wear what you want. I'm not like, I like wearing outfits that I guarantee you 40 and 50 year old women are like, why you're 30? Like you shouldn't be wearing that. It's not about that. But if you are walking around in pasties, a tutu, and a pacifier, there's a level of narcissism. And this goes for men, too, who wear, like, these ridiculous, like, onesies with, like, tall, like, or, or totems or whatever. What, if you are going that far, there's a level of narcissism to that that you want the focus to be on you. And I paid to see a DJ. I did not pay to see your probably very nice boob job like in my face while I'm trying to dance. And so I think that there's just like this weird narcissistic thing where it's like, no, like this is where I express myself. This is where it's like, okay, but you can also do that in a way that's unobtrusive to everybody else. And so I just think it's like a narcissistic thing and I don't really get it. There's levels to it though. Again, not black and white, it's, it's nuanced, but like, I, I just think it's dumb. It's like, you're just looking for an excuse to be an exhibitionist do you god bless but like don't pretend that it's one thing when it's the other yeah that makes sense that's so funny i didn't know i don't really know anything about festival culture or like edm and shit like i came from the hip-hop world i was a mm -hmm. hip-hop dj i was just like djing for rappers at subterranean like that's, cool. that's the world i came from and then i started getting into the clubs 2012 ish when edm was huge mm -hmm. and i'm playing martin garrick's animals even though i'm like i don't know what this is and yeah. i hate it but yeah. they're paying me to play it yeah and now i love house music yeah i've i've turned fully into like okay i see what everyone 
loves about house music Especially because being from chicago i mean it's like yeah and and during the edm thing there was a blur especially in the nightclubs it's hard to communicate with management they'll tell you oh play edm and they want and they're they're trying to tell you to play house music but you hear edm and you're like okay this is edm i'm playing this and like it that always happens with djs and management in the yeah. clubs is like you think you're saying what you want, but what you don't know what you're saying half the time. Is there, okay, so like, you know if you go to Spy, you're gonna get True House. You know if you go to Prism, you're gonna get True House. What clubs are you talking about where like, because I would love to find other spaces too, but I hate getting burned. I hate getting excited to go somewhere. And then I'm like, what the fuck is, like, I, I don't wanna listen to Martin Garrix. So it's a waste <laughs> of putting on a face, you know, for the night. Yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, in terms of like, going to to hear house music in chicago in a nightclub i feel like you, your best bet is to go see an artist you know like abo that you know his music and you know yeah. what type of thing he's gonna play like a local dj outside of spy bar where you know they're gonna play some house music like cashmere but even at cashmere like i was playing house shit and they wanted he he was like yo play harder shit like yeah play harder i've been, shit. And I've been on like, different nights where it's been a little yeah like so so you know arbella or arbea yeah they play great music and they have a lot of vinyl djs there which is cool for like a chiller vibe and great cocktails that's a good spot that's tight i've never yeah. been uh you know quick tastic yes he, his thursday nights are yeah great. yeah he yeah. asked me to do a thursday and i'm so, i was supposed to be starting at the farm i don't know what's going on thursdays are crazy but I do want to go there and I definitely want to play there for sure. You should. It's a great, like, the vibes are always amazing. And there's no cover, but like, it's only people, like, I feel like it's like they just run their establishment really well. You don't very often get like large influxes of people who don't know how to act there because they do have tables like to eat at. You know, it's like a restaurant. So it's a good it's like a good spot especially for the 30 plus year olds yeah it looks really dope and i didn't even know i knew the name and then i walked past it the other day and i'm like oh this is right here yeah it's like right where rosati's used to be yep. on grand right yep yeah so i definitely want to check that out um but yeah i i don't know i forgot what i was saying i like house music now i'm just like recently falling in love with it because the stuff that's coming out right now is so fucking good the abos I love Matroda, Dom Dalla is crazy. Like it's got soul, it's got like a funk to it. It's got a feel to it. It's got a rhythm. It's not like hard hitting, big synth, EDM, huge yep. big room club stuff. Like I can't connect with that. It's it's designed to make you dance. And like, the so I like lots of different sub, sub genres of house. Like I, like I like more minimal stuff. Like I, I can, you know, I used to be big into techno, not so much anymore. But like, I feel like I'm a broken record saying how old I am. I know I'm not that old, but like it is hard to have the stamina to like stay out when you're pretty sober. And so like <laughs> the one thing that keeps me going is like that true house music that's like, that does have those hip hop roots because it's come from Chicago and they've come, they were born in a similar place. Like that's music designed to just make you dance and you literally don't need any alcohol, any extras to have a good time listening to house. Yeah. And I've seen it connect across multiple generations. Like my dad, like I'll play house music for him and he just like he loves it, you know? Yeah. I'm trying to get my girlfriend to enjoy it. She's like, it's just the same beat over and over. And I'm like, it's not. It's not. You got to really. It takes time. It takes time. <laughs> so keep working on it. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I promise. But uh, what, like, how do you feel about the Afro house takeover? That's the new shit. Yeah, I think it's always interesting, like, because before it was Latin House, right? Mm -hmm. And now it's Afro House. And I think, you know, you got to give the the artists who have been making that kind of music, like, their flowers, um, you know, it's, 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 we get into muddy waters when we're talking about, like, when Latin House was popular, right? And, like, people were talking about, oh, John Summit makes the best Latin House, or, like, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, but, like, what about the Latin artists, you know? Like, it's, like, literally innate to, like, who they are. Um, things come in <laughs> waves, like there's trends. I, I think it's great. I Like I said, I like all genres of, of house, um, but it's crazy like how fast we cycle through trends now. Like things get picked up and put down because of TikTok and because of social media. So what's it gonna be next? I don't know. But I, I'm really not like a trend person. Like I know it's a necessary evil and like marketing and stuff to hop on trends, but I just like what I like and I, 
I stay consistent. But Afro House is great. Yeah, it's tight. I see a lot of people arguing on Twitter about whether it should or should not be played in a club. They're like, it's it's outside, it's beach music, it's mm-hmm. daytime, it's mm-hmm. it's there's a time and a place for Afro House. I don't know why people are trying to force it in the club. Yeah, you really have to be like as a DJ, you are a curator of time and space. Like you have to make sure that the vibe is right and like that's a hard job. But I mean people are listening to you because or people are up there paying attention to you because you're like curating their night. And so if you think you can slip it in and it's going to work, do it. But like, d- you know, every DJ has their own ethos. Like I was talking about this with Eats Everything at Arc, And I was talking about the fact that he primarily plays his own music or he'll do an edit of a track and play that live. And then, you know, we were talking about like, why do some artists like just stick to their guns and like play what they're going to play? And they're basically like, well, if you don't like it, you can fuck off. Um, and... I don't know, it's a personal choice. And it's like, what can you risk? You know, like I've made conscious decisions in my life to zig when others have zagged and maybe it's cost me something, but that was just my choice. So if you think you can pull it off, I mean, any great DJ can pull off anything. Like you can play fucking Journey for a second if you really want to, if you have the crowd in the palm of your hands, you know? Yeah. Play 10 seconds of Journey and go back to your Afro house, whatever it is, but you have to be skilled enough to do that. Yeah, you have to trick them into liking it. Yeah, everything can like work but you have you have to be really good like there's things that i'm way more confident about doing now like on camera and like questions that i asked that i wasn't confident asking like 10 years ago when i started out as a news reporter you know Mm -hmm. takes time yeah who's making some of your favorite house right now like current good question newer artist all right so newer artists i mean not necessarily newer I always feel like scared to say that because I don't want people to think I'm calling them like up and coming when they've been at it forever. Right. I love Abo. I mm-hmm. love Skepta. I'm sure you know who Skepta is being in the hip hop world. Chris Stussy. Um, I love Hot Since 82. I always have. Uh, God, who else? Mal P is great. Um, I love Idris Elba. I actually have on my phone i have like this dream lineup that my husband and i keep like if we were to go to a festival and i have all the names on there trying to think kevin knapp he's amazing he's out of detroit if you come from the hip-hop world look up kevin knapp k-n-a-p-p okay like he does all his own vocals and he infuses hip-hop a lot into his music he's so good sosa i love sosa armin van helden very old school but he's one of my favorites should I keep going? I have lots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's awesome. House music right now is so good. It's so good. People are dropping just, it's the groove. Like, And also, do you enjoy hip hop music? I do. You you like it all? Like you could go to a club, like an open format club and just have a good time? Or you I just couldn't go to house? open format anymore. I'm kind of a purist. But like 90s and early 2000s hip hop, like I love. Okay. Yeah. So if I could go to a venue that played just that and not like anything past 2005. No Waka Flocka? I do like Waka Flocka. Okay, okay. But I don't know if I know how to dance. To, like once you learn how to dance to house music, it's really hard like I went to a, um, what concert was I at a couple weeks ago? Green Day. And I was like, what am I supposed to do? Just like kind of jump up and down. Like I love Green Day, but I forgot how to act at like non-house music shows now. Yeah, you can't shuffle to. Uh... No, you can't like groove. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. And also newly becoming a, a real fan of house music and being a DJ and wanting to play house music more it's a different way of DJing than it is DJing hip hop or open format. So would you say, did so did you prep your sets when you were doing strictly open format? Not like define prep. Like, like literally plan. Like, like this is my first track. This yeah. is my second track. No. Do you do that with house? No, I still don't. I'll I'll make a crate. Maybe if I'm DJing at somewhere new, like when I played at Cashmere, I made a crate of like, this is the stuff I want to play. This is mm-hmm. the stuff that I like that I, I will enjoy playing. But then it's off, you know, I'm off the rails yeah. at any yeah. moment. <laughs> I know like some artists have like clusters, like they know this track going into this track mm-hmm. will work really well, but obviously that they read the room. 
I know some artists who plan like everything because they're just meticulous about, you know, you only get an hour, two hours, like what they want to include, especially if they're producing their own music. So I'd say I could never do it. I feel like I say this all the time. I'm the only person in the world who I know that doesn't want to DJ. That doesn't want to. Yeah. No, you've it never seems even tried. So no, I can't even stand in front of decks. It makes me like cry. Why? It just looks so complicated, and the fact that you're getting like <clears throat> feedback from the crowd as you're doing it, it's too much pressure. Yeah, that's what. That's why I couldn't just stick to a set list. I think because I mess up <laughs> constantly, whether they recognize it or not i will recognize it and i know that i messed up i like oh i wanted to do this but i did this whatever I let this loop for too long who the fuck knows i'm i'm doing something someone distracts me i'm looking over here now five seconds have gone i missed my point that i wanted to mix out at like there's anything that could yeah happen. and then it's like a domino effect so if i do mess up and then i need to like regain the crowd i need to give them something that i know works tried and true like this song into this song is perfect energy you know then i have to go off of my preset plan path and and captivate the crowd again with this yeah. you know yeah that's no it's definitely hard like like the only thing i can compare it to is being on camera interviewing doing live interviews there's been times where like yesterday i was doing interviews and i noticed the mic that i was using I had turned it off and I didn't and I like sneakily turned it on mid interview without the person knowing and I was able to salvage the audio. But like little things like that, like freak me out yeah. still. And so I can't imagine <clears throat> train wrecking or like just messing anything up or like someone hitting. Like, I feel like if I was a DJ, I would never let anyone in the booth because I would just have anxiety over like, don't touch the decks, don't fucking touch me. So props. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good time. It is fun. Sometimes it feels like the most important job in the world before i get to the club i'll freak myself out i'll give myself a little panic attack like what am i gonna play what if what if they don't like what i'm gonna play like yeah. what am i gonna do and i've been doing this for 10 plus years and yeah, it I never still, goes away right yeah I, so that was like the biggest takeaway i had from arc interviewing artists i'm like they are talking about the same shit that people are just starting out are talking about and i think that that's really helpful for people to hear from people like you and people who play festivals because if you know that the people you look up to or the people who have been making this a career for a decade like still have those fears like it's just a very human thing yeah you for some reason just it's crazy the and that before, keeps you humble it's a good yeah, thing yeah. it's a good thing it's i mean yeah i guess it, you could say it's a good thing but like god would i love to just get rid of that like yes i would love to get rid of that sometimes i'm like in my kitchen i'm like I have to DJ for four hours. Do I even know enough music yeah. to play for four hours yeah. when really in my computer there's 40,000 hours worth yep. of music? You know, like yep. it's I know. insane. It is. I mean, you're a performer. Like that's what it is, right? Like you're performing for people. It's just you're playing other, other people's music, but it is a lot of pressure. And like another big, you know, pillar of my content and like my podcast and Patreon and all that stuff is, is like the mental fortitude. Like what sort of mindset things do you need to learn so you can have longevity in this? Um, and that that's when it comes to actually, you know, doing the thing and like DJing and also how to handle feedback online, criticism, how to navigate, um, tr you know, being canceled or whatever. Like you are in the spotlight and people are so demanding of like, it's so weird how like everyone wants to know what who every DJ is voting for. Yeah. It's like I would net like I would never no offense to like anybody. I would never trust the political opinions, whether I agree with them or not, of like the guy DJing at three a.m. You know, at this <laughs> yeah. little like why do I care? Why do I? So I mean, you really have to be prepared for all of that to deal with everyone's shit. Yeah, that's hilarious. Now. Speaking of like um, having longevity and understanding how to keep your mindset right in uh, performing, something for me that comes to mind is like my eating habits. If I'm DJing at night, I normally don't fuck around and eat a bunch of pizza and shit beforehand because I know that's going to affect me. 
if I'm not DJing at night, I'm full of donuts and pizza, unfortunately, because I can't help myself. I'm sick. <laughs> but uh, I noticed that you talk a lot about diet restrictions and things like that, allergies, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's something you want to talk about on here, but it's interesting to me because I want to know how this even came about. Is this something like from your childhood where you've just always been allergic to things? No. Or is it something I'm, you've learned? Dude, I'm so pit. Like, number one, I've always been so i'm sicilian i'm married to a sicilian food's a big part of our life and i've never been the type of person where it's like you have to restrict things it's all about like balance and mindful eating and like if you eat pizza tonight have a salad tomorrow and don't worry about it life is for living and i've always been able to maintain a good weight and like you know i go to the gym and i'm you know i'm disciplined but like i also like to enjoy like the word intention i use a lot but it's like i'm gonna if i'm gonna drink it's gonna be very intentional if i'm gonna have you know, dessert, like it's going to be the best fucking croissant or like whatever. Like it's not going to be like, uh, you know, a ho ho. Zebra cake. I do love zebra <laughs> cakes though. Zebra, zebra cakes. cakes were the best out of all the little Debbies. So, so, but what I, if that's my choice for that night, then fine. But like I have to really like make sure I want it and I'm not just like mindlessly like eating or mindlessly drinking. Yeah. And so, like I was the healthiest I'd ever been from like 2021 to the beginning of 2023 because that's when I really started going like low alcohol and like doing that more intentional drinking thing. And then all of a sudden, right after we close on our condo, which was like for anyone who buys a home, it's like the most stressful thing ever. I started feeling like shit. Like I was waking up feeling like I had just eaten like 10 pounds of food before I went to bed, brain fog. I was like, what is going on? And I'm just an avid researcher, like it's in my nature as a journalist. And so I went down this rabbit hole, long story short, found out that I had diagnosed with like, everyone thinks that like, if you have gut health issues, it's just IBS, IBS. And like, there's so many other things, like IBS is the umbrella term. And what I had was something called SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And it makes you feel like shit and you find your root cause. And we found out that the place that we were renting before we got our condo had mold in it because it was like an old Chicago building. And so it caused all these problems for me. And I started treating it and I was like, okay, I'm feeling better, but like not 100%. And so my doctor was like, take this food allergy test. And now I've just like literally still coming to terms with the fact that I'm like, I'm allergic to wheat, soy, sesame, peanut, almonds, hazelnut. And it's really, it's shitty and it's extra shitty because once I cut it out, I started to feel better. So like that was the confirmation and I was like hoping it was just fake news. Like I was like, that's not true. I'm not allergic to that. But our food supply is poison. I swear to God, like the food that we get here, like I'm going to Europe next week and like I probably would be able to eat those things and feel fine. Are you going to try? I might, if it's worth it, if it's really worth it. So yeah, so like, God, like just like you have to be on top of your taxes and like your business stuff, like stay on top of your health because nothing like your nothing matters until you have a health problem and then like it throws everything off. It impacts your ability, especially in this lifestyle that is so aggressive. Like if you want to make making music your full time thing, you have to be on top of your health. And a lot of DJs are leading the charge on that. Like Hudson Sadie two told me that he's been more mindful about like his drinking choices. LPGOB, who's amazing, also was talking to me about that. I've talked to lots of sober DJs or DJs who are, you know, just I think pa- Patrick Topping, another one of my favorite artists, he's throwing a sober October rave soon. So I think the leaders of the industry like need to you know, and they are, they're talking about it more and that inspires people to, you know, take their health more seriously. Yeah. And that's why I talk about it too. That's tight. I kind of want to take a food allergy test. You should. I just don't trust the medical system at all. I've had 0% very bad experiences through my entire life with hospitals and doctors and like, what? And um, I, I go to a functional doctor and I'm still a little sus. Yeah, <laughs> I would try functional doctor next because I agree with you. I mean, it's more profitable to keep us sick than anything. And so you really have to like think about the choices that you're making. One thing I'll never forget that my my friend's husband's mom said to me, she was a nurse and she said, we can keep you alive for a very long time, but you're not going to be happy with your life. And that she was basically saying, you like doctors are trained to keep you alive not necessarily comfortable 
So like you can have all these bad habits and they'll keep you just treading water, you know, but it's up to you to take control of your quality of life. And I took that to heart. I was like, and I mean, I used to smoke cigarettes back in the day when it was still cool to do that. They're coming back. I see them everywhere now and I'm back. like, why the <laughs> fuck? Like, are we that stressed out that you're bringing back cigarettes? It's killing me. It smells so bad. I can't believe I used to smoke. But yeah, I mean, it's it scared the shit out of me. I was like, yeah, I don't want to be like, you know, on a ventilator, or like, you know, pre-diabetic. Cause like, I love sugar. Like, I really do. Like, that's my downfall. And so that's kind of what inspired me to do it. Cause no one, like doctors aren't here to save you. No one's here to save you. You have to save yourself. Yeah, that's real shit. I know it sucks. I love pizza. I love sugar. I love sugar I'm, I so fucking, much. I binge so hard. So do I. Like it's actually sca- That's my one vice. Like I don't have an addictive personality, but sugar, like I can go nuts and like come out of like a black hole and be like, how the fuck did I just eat? That's disgusting. Like, that's like not even like, I'm talking like candy that has no nutritional value. Yeah. yeah. It's bad. I'm the same way. I, I didn't start drinking till I was 25 and I didn't smoke weed till I was 28. So like- Why? I in my family there's alcoholism that runs in my family and like from a very young age I just watched my dad and my brother have to do this extra thing have to attend meetings and like mm. tack on this whole extra part of life just so that they could live life properly and I was like I don't even want to know yeah. if I need I don't I want my time to do whatever I want I don't want to wow. have to do that that's re- I've never heard someone explain it like that before. That's crazy. Yeah, so I I just never drank. I partied like high school, went to parties, had a good time, never drank. College, same thing. So you know it can be done without booze. For sure, yeah. yeah. So I never I never had those bad habits, but food was always my shit all my whole life. That was always my biggest vice. Yeah, yeah, and you know they put stuff in our food, like all the additives in our food, and this is not. I still feel sometimes like nervous talking about this because people are going to like accuse you of being a conspiracy theorist, but follow the money. Like it's cheap to put these additives in food and they're addictive and they make you, you know, want more and more. And it's, yeah, it's, it's a horrible thing. And it is, it's a horrible thing. And I agree, like food for me has always been the biggest thing, but, um, with allergies, you have to really like, like we already cooked 98% of the time now it's like almost 100% because you don't know when you order food from DoorDash, like it doesn't list all the allergens and the stuff. So it's not worth the risk. So we just cook a lot at home and it actually does save money. Yeah, it saves crazy money. I'd never cooked a day in my life. Always Uber Eats for So your girlfriend ever. She does all the cooking? She cooks. She's a beast in the kitchen. That's amazing. Crazy. Don't lose that. Yeah. I'm, That's yeah. It's big. Yeah. My husband was a chef for 15 years before he left the restaurant business and now he remodels homes. So nice. I'm pretty lucky I have like, he has a lot of skill sets. I yeah, can that's cook. incredible. He can cook and remodel the crib. I know, he's the catch. <laughs> he's Yeah, he's the catch and he, ha- and he has remodeled our place. But um, I can cook, but like he's so much better at it. So I'll just do the little things. I'll, you know, chop the vegetables, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's tight. Yeah, it's been big, saves money and it just feels good and it's like, I never had home cooked meals. I mean, that's half my problem, I think, is that I was raised on fruity pebbles and mm-hmm. Pop Tarts. So I just, there's like a piece of me that just loves that shit. Zebra cakes, McDonald's, like going yeah. to fucking Burger King when I was a kid was like the best but, meal you could and that's possibly get. when there get. was no consequences either. Like you, you weren't like, you know, feeling shitty because you're young. Like I'll, I'll never forget my freshman year of college. Like, breaking up or like my boyfriend or whatever broke up with me and I spent because I was like drunk and I spent the whole night crying eating McDonald's and like drinking more and I woke up feeling great and I remember (laughs) thinking to myself I had this like self-awareness moment I was like this isn't gonna last forever but I was 18 you know and it's like I just like destroyed my body for like 12 hours straight because I was upset like crying alone, like, you know, your face gets puffy, like whatever. <laughs> and I felt great when I woke up. I was like, I got to hang on to this moment because I know it's not going to. And now it's like a stiff wind will like throw my back out. And I'm like, fuck. Yeah, it sucks. Getting old is real. thing. It's a real thing. And people talk about it. And when you're young, you're just like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I know. You don't think it's ever going to hit you. And then you start to like, especially for women, you start to see 
the wrinkles or like whatever it is, you're like, oh, that's new. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of pressure. Yeah, unlock the new feature. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> unlock the new feature. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, it's something different every year, I swear to God, but Botox is cheap now. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I am an open book. Like, I talk about that all the time, too. I My biggest thing is, like, I don't want anyone to, like, have a gotcha moment over me. So I'm very, like authentic like it's a buzzword but like i talk about all of it yeah so i want to be real about how i make my money what i do to my face like how i live my life i think it's important and like that's not to say like i'm still a very private person like people don't actually know what i you know they don't know my private life like at home and stuff but like what i choose to talk about i'm always very open about i think it's I love how you're like being quiet to try to get me to say more. I, a, I just want to let you finish. Tactic. I don't know. It's I a just good tactic. <laughs> no, it's a good interview tactic. But I try not to interrupt, even though I do sometimes, but I want to most of the time, and I try not to. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, no, I I think it's important, like especially being someone who helps out DJs. Like people may think, like, well, what, like you're not a DJ, so like, how do you know, like, what we're going through? And I think just like being vulnerable and like sharing all those parts of myself like it i want people to trust me and i think it's an important facet of it being any sort of like content creator you know it's important to like show who you really are yeah and there's definitely right now there's the two ends of the spectrum that i feel like people gravitate to there's like the super fake people that some people love then there's the super authentic like long form mm -hmm. podcast type mm -hmm. like that's all the shit that i watch consume yeah. podcasts all day just to watch people talk and get an idea of who they are really like not even necessarily listening to the words coming out of their mouth but just the way that they're talking and the the direction that they took the conversation and the perspective that they have from that question or yeah. all that. It's, I mean, I think we're gonna have a renaissance like in long form content. I think people are gonna come back to it. Short form content, like we can only do this for so long. You know, it's getting shorter and shorter. If you're not entertained in the first five seconds, you scroll, it's crazy. But I think, I think it was like Will Clark he might have said this on my show. Or I heard him say it on his own podcast, but he was saying that he likes doing podcasts because you, just like you just said, you get to see the full human experience, the pauses, the people, you could see people's wheels turning. Like it's not as polished. And that is something I've had to challenge myself on, like as authentic as I am with my words. As a woman and as someone who used to be in the news, I always want to come off super polished, you know, and like this has helped me relax a little bit and like just it nothing. Ha it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, yeah. the content doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, I like that. Mm. It's dope. I didn't even shower today. <laughs> well, I did that. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> You're, this is your place. Like this is your, know. you know, you're allowed to do that. I mean, when I do my podcast, like because it's only me in my office. I, yeah, it's sweatpants on the bottom <laughs> and it's like quick, like they call it like on a RuPaul's Drag Race quick drag. Like it's literally quick drag. It's like the front of my hair is brushed, maybe not the back of it. It's very, yeah, but it's like, it's my own space. So yeah, yeah, I, I love it. I love it. And thank you for coming and doing this. I know that uh, we just kind of talked on uh, DMs like five times back and forth and then all of a sudden you're in my home which is yeah. weird for some people but yeah no I you got great feedback when my brother Propo was on the show and Sherm yeah and so I, I, I want to do asked. another episode with him because I had the hiccups the whole fucking time Did and you? I like couldn't that's Focus. like the worst, like podcaster's worst nightmare. Yeah, it was horrific. Oh my god! It was. God. I had the hiccup for like four days straight. That's crazy. There was crazy. something wrong with me. I think I saw you. Did you post something about that or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's nuts. That's scary because you can literally get them for like your whole life. I, my girlfriend's like looking it up, and she's like, "Oh yeah, the longest lasting case was seventy six years." I'm like, "Okay, great, thanks." That's yeah. Could you imagine? <laughs> it was bad, and you don't know. Like, whatever, you get the hiccups, and then you're like, oh, I got the hiccups, let me drink some water, they go away. But when they last for days, you don't realize how affected you are. You can't sleep, you're hiccuping, right. you're right. waking up because you're hiccuping. Yeah. You can't 
talk, I can't do a pod, I'm yeah, like, thing. And then you want to explain yourself, but it's like embarrassing and it's just like, oh, yeah, it I know. It was very weird. That is crazy. That and coughing are like the worst. I've done some interviews before where like, I was getting, you know, and like you're sick and then you have a lingering cough for two weeks. And then I'm like, can I squeeze this out? And by the end of it, my face is red and like my eyes are watering because I'm like suppressing a cough. Yeah. You gotta do what you gotta do. But this was very fun. Thank you for giving me the space to talk about these things. Like being on the other side of the mic, you know, I just like you, I try not to insert myself in conversations and make the guests the star. And so it was, it was very nice to be on this side. Yeah, thanks for coming. We'll we'll have to do some more stuff again. This was fun. I would love it. And I uh, I want to come to the what's it called one more time? Nexus Chicago, Chicago Music, Music Nexus. Nexus. Yeah, yes, that looks dope. Yeah, and that sounds cool. We would cool. love to have you. I want to uh, I want to see my boy Sherm. He's yeah. bringing. Is Malort sponsoring it? What's going yes. on? Is he just pouring Malort which... down everyone's throat? Uh, yes, there will be lots of malort <laughs> to go around. Uh, but CH Distiller, Distillery is sponsoring, and they like the what they Hervé Malort, like Malort's their brand. So we'll have other more um, palatable drinks <laughs> available too. And then mocktails, which is great. I was, Tight. I really wanted to make sure we'd have mocktails. So we have a couple mocktail sponsors, System Seltzers. If, uh, do you know Anthony Spina? He's awesome. I don't he's think a, so. He's a Chicago guy. Um, he started a company called Riot Pop. He used to work for White Claw. System Seltzers is... You get a six pack and some of them have alcohol. Some of them don't. They're mocktails, but all the cans look the same so that you can like feel included in drinking and no one will really know. Well, are they drinking alcohol or not? But so. you know which ones are. Oh, not. Yes. It's not like okay, Russian I roulette. It was like, yeah, <laughs> no, I'm no, like, this it is says new. it on there. It'll either say, <laughs> like, no, okay. that would be interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a, that would be problematic. No, it says like 0% or like 5% on there, okay, but it's yeah. like small enough where people aren't going to be like, you know. Can't tell. Yeah. Yeah. And so we have them sponsoring. So I wanted to give options to everybody. Professor Pizza, we're getting catering from him. I'm supposed to have him on the pod. You he need was, to have him. He was supposed to do it and then he got COVID. Damn, he's going through it. He's my childhood like best friend. Oh, really? Yeah, he grew up in Hawthorne Woods down the street. Oh, no so way. So we do lots of stuff, um, like lots of collabs together. He Tight. had his, now I can't have his pizza. Right. Which is like shitty, heartbreaking. Yeah. But he has the best pizza in Chicago, in my opinion. And so he's, we're doing caring from him, a couple other places. Like, so it's going to be good. Yeah, he's a big comedy fan. That actually, the first time I ever heard the name Professor Pizza was. I think I was watching Kill Tony or listening to Tony on a podcast or something. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about how when they performed in Chicago, this dude, Professor Pizza, came to the green room, gave everyone pizza. Is, he has no formal marketing training, but he has been able to infiltrate the comedy scene and open restaurants. Like, it's crazy. And, like, he's too humble about it. Like, he never wants to brag about it. I'm like, dude, you've built an insane brand, like, all around just his ability to make awesome pizza. Yeah, yeah he's great. Tight. He's amazing. So yeah, happy to have him. Um, definitely a shout out to Tony. But yeah, it'll be good. Would love to have you. We just want people to like, just like leave with tangible opportunities in their back pocket, you know? Yeah. Like this is like we're trying to democratize the scene a little bit and just make it a little more accessible for people. Because some people can't go out till three, four in the morning because of their jobs, you know? And they're trying to like, transition into that life but it's like well how can you when you're so limited so so yeah yeah it's tight good people doing good things i like it and thank i support you. it thank you and uh we'll talk soon thanks for coming through again diamond cut will have your uh instagram handle and everything in the beginning Great. of the episode on the screen if you guys are watching on youtube make sure you like the video drop a comment subscribe to the channel definitely algorithm activating activity Anything else? No, you covered it. All right. We'll see you next time. Peace. Well, all right. All right. Battle raps because I've shaken grown men to the point that they can't even face their own friends. Ha. That's why they rhyme about jewels, not life, because the ice on which they skating is so thin. That's what I love about the human soul. It'll usually show when the truth ain't told. Ha. Use a lie.